not agree more with what you said. I think that uh, aviation and tourism are inextricably linked. Uh, tourism, by definition, basically is you know people traveling to see things that are uh, unfamiliar to them, so new experiences, new things. And aviation over the last century has proven itself to be the most efficient, the most widespread, and the most popular form of travel. So if somebody wants to go somewhere to, to, uh, to experience new things, to see new things, aviation has to be part of the entire tourism process to get them there. Okay, thank you very much. So as I said, Sean Mendes is the Chief Operations Officer of Africa World Airlines. Thank you. I'll now call on Anthony Safo from Kenya Airways. Anthony is a communicator, marketer, and customer service person who believes that acquiring and sharing knowledge should be a primary focus of every member of society, since this is a sure way of ensuring a progressively better world. He currently works with Kenya Airways as the country manager Ghana, having previously served as the airline's marketing manager for Anglophone West Africa. Anthony, welcome to the show. Kindly give us your view on the topic at hand, the role of the aviation Thank you very much, in the tourism sector. I completely agree with those initial comments that were made by Sean, except that I, I, I see the relationship as much more mutually supportive. So you see as a lot of us cite statistics such as the fact that half of all international tourists travel by air. But what we don't see often is that close to 70% of all air travelers are tourists. So it's, I think these are two industries. I, it's even difficult to separate them, but these are two industries that really, really complement each other. Okay, so these are two industries, but we complement each other, right? No, and I think, uh, you know, from what he says, um, Yes, they yes they also they complement each other, but I think they have very different roles to play as well. Um, you know, aviation in particular, or airlines. Let's speak from the aviation perspective as a representative of the uh, aviation uh, industry. Specializes in moving people. Airlines are not the specialists, although some may have divisions or you know uh, subsidiaries or whatever. But airlines are not specialized in creating experiences. Airlines are specialized in moving people. Similarly, a marketer, a hotel operator, a tour guide is not uh, is, is not you know can't fly a plane. So both of those are very essential components of creating a strong and vibrant tourist industry. Uh, you need to be able to create something for people to want to go and see, to want to go and experience for the airline to have business. And similarly, you must have the airline there to be able to bring the people to come and do it. So it is very symbiotic. And uh, I won't say one won't exist without the other, but definitely both would not thrive without the partnership. Okay, so the tourism industry would not uh, thrive without the aviation industry. And vice versa. Aviation, I mean, uh, you know, as Tony said, a large number of, uh, of passengers traveling internationally are traveling for tourism, uh, whether it's domestic tourism, international tourism, intercontinental tourism, and so forth. Uh, certainly, I think some sectors have not quite developed as much as others, and we can address that as we go through this hour. But... Uh, you know, airlines would be transporting a lot less people if people were not traveling for tourism. So tourism keeps airlines in business and airlines keep tourism in business. Wow, that's great. Tourism keeps airline in business, airlines keeps tourism in business. Okay. Uh, case study, our country, Ghana. What is the airline's impact on our tourism industry in Ghana? Ah. 
Do you want me to start on this because you've only got 45 minutes left on uh Sure. On yeah, do do start but make a shot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think Ghana has let huge opportunities go begging and I think this is going to come back and hurt Ghana over the next few months in particular, especially in the wake of this COVID pandemic. I think I said this last year when we went to Takoradi for the uh, Aviator conference over there and I challenged a number of the uh, of the delegates at that conference to 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 look more at domestic and regional tourism development to try and create a more attractive tourism offering, whether that's ground transport, hotels, whatever else, to people in the near region, whether that is, you know, whether that's a national park in the north offering Accra residents weekend breaks, whether that is hotels in Takoradi offering Nigerian residents, you know, come to the beach in Takoradi for the weekend and things like that. Instead, the focus in Ghanaian tourism has very much been, and you look at things like the year of return and the like, it has been focused Nothing wrong with it. I mean, that you must focus on, on all sectors of it, but it's been focused very much at the, the Western world tourism dollar rather than at the regional tourism Naira or tourism uh, Sifa or whatever else. And that's a real shame because I think you get more tourists, as in people coming here not for business, but people coming here to experience Ghana and Ghanaian culture and Ghanaian hospitality and the national parks and everything that Ghana has to offer. You have more of these visitors from Europe and North America than you actually do from Nigeria or Cote d'Ivoire, which are literally next door. And uh, that is something which we have not exploited well enough in Ghana. And uh, I think that will hurt us over the next few months as we see that travel becomes a lot easier for people within the ECOWAS region, within the African region, rather than people getting on a long haul 10, 12 hour flight to come, because that's not going to be an easy, uh, easy thing to travel with over the next few months. Okay. Thank you. Um, Tony? I couldn't agree more, but I would rather focus on, and will not rather focus on, he has laid out what the problem is, so I'll try and talk about where we should be going. I, I am a typical example of somebody who loves local tourism. So I sit, I hop in a car and I drive around Ghana. So I have, I've been to at least every district in every region, major district in Ghana. Now, I would use the Volta region especially as an example. There are places in the Volta region that would blow your mind out. And you see, you wouldn't know this um, because when you look at material literature, uh, videos about tourism, watching them in Ghana, you see these things in Kenya, in Botswana, and in other areas. And we actually have better places like that. that. Now, Sean said that it would come back to help us. It's not too late. I think that, especially now, when it's much more difficult for us to be traveling to the, the uh, North Americas and the Central Americas and the, and the Far East destinations. I think this is the best, and not even in the other African destinations like East Africa and Southern Africa. This is the right time to quickly work together, government, airlines, and the tourism industry, work together to promote what we have here. Because in the near foreseeable future, there's going to be regional travel. It will be either domestic tourism or West African regional tourism. So we need to quickly find a way of building, the, of, of promoting what we have. Because it would happen if we don't promote the other countries that, that are quick to do that. The Nigeria, the Cote d'Ivoire, some of those would. And especially the Gambia, South, who, who have already had some exposure out there, will take advantage of the situation and make money for the, for the economies, and we would have, we would have lost um, out, especially as Sean has said. So this is the time. Yes, the issues are there, but this is the time for us to quickly find a way of working together to, to promote those beautiful sites that we have. Okay, thank you. So when you say working together, you mean the aviation and tourism industries should come together to make... And, and government, because if you listen to what Sean said, we, we, we promote events, and we promote events to people from the Western world. So it's like it is either an event about emancipation or something about Ghana Black, something. 
instead of just continually every day promoting the sites that we have that people can come here and promoting that also to people around us so people that have similar cultures would appreciate it better we should be able to be promoting that to them instead of always promoting events that happen once a year or two times a year and we sell them only to the african-americans and people like that but it, it's working together it should be government and both industries working together to promote to promote what we have here to people around us who understand that as better. In short, we should look within instead of outside in promoting our tourism industry. No, you don't necessarily have to, it doesn't have to be one or the other. You need to be doing all of it. You, you know, when a, if you're running a restaurant and a person comes in and you're saying, oh, I'm trying to market to the college students crowd, but you get a business person coming in for lunch, you don't turn him away. You, you may be targeting one sector, but if you are winding up that you have a product that can serve both sectors, there's nothing wrong with serving both sectors. You need to scale yourself up and you need to be, you need to be willing to embrace success. And I think that is something which we've, which we've struggled from a mindset that people have not been willing to, to actually be successful in that respect. They, they view success through a very narrow, tunnel kind of vision that success is oh we had this many visitors for a year of return but how many visitors did you lose that were there for the taking because you you were unable to to just simply do things as uh, that facilitated their visits when you know i i, I was at aquaba last year in um nigeria in lagos yes and uh you know, one of the, the main things which I tried to stress to a lot of the tour operators and all that, and of course, the big focus of that was, oh, Dubai and Dubai and this and that. But Ghana Tourism, to their credit, had a good stand over there, put things out over there. And I had a lot of operators who came to just simply ask the question, how easy would it be for us to put this together? And my answer was from the airline side, we will, we will put the deals together. And I mean, I know we've discussed it with you. I've discussed it with plenty of operators. I've discussed it with regional ministers who are keen to do it. But at the end of it, it just, the stakeholders seem to be, for whatever reason, unable to take that final step to close out the deal, unable to actually say, let's do this. I mean, the flights are flying. Well, okay, they're not flying right now, but the flights have been flying where you've been able to get from Lagos to Takarani, for example. I, I see something like that as a huge deal. I think that there are enough Nigerians in Lagos alone who would be happy to come on a Friday morning to Takarani, spend the weekend and fly back on a Sunday night or Monday morning to be back in the office over there. And I think if you can get 15 to 20 of these people every week, and that's not a huge number. I mean, Ryanair in Europe moves tens of thousands of city break people every weekend. And that is just Takoradi. We've got Takoradi, we've got Volta region, let whole airport works out, take people there, have charters taking, bringing people in for the Yam Festival. You can take people to see all the waterfalls, take them up to Tamale in the north for the national parks. You can, I mean, the culture in Kumasi, this is stuff that as tourist destinations, despite the fact that they have less actual substance to them they just market it better and that i think is where ghana has done a great job in developing the image over the last few years through the year of return and everything and i think ghana has definitely become the number one tourist attraction in west africa for the outside world but within west africa i don't think anybody considers ghana as a tourist destination a nigerian will go and queue outside the u.s embassy spend thousands of dollars to get a visa buy tickets and go over there and have a less enjoyable experience than if he took a few naira and came to ghana he doesn't have to worry about foreign exchange he doesn't have to worry about anything his zenith bank card which works in an atm in nigeria will work in an atm over here he can try ghanaian jollof and see how much better it is than nigerian jollof and all of this can happen just straight with existing resources and infrastructure, all we have to do is market it and present it to the customer to be able to buy. Okay. So what we are not doing well is marketing the brand. Absolutely. We're not marketing it well to, to ourselves, to our neighbors, to our own people. That is what we are not doing well. We're doing great in marketing it to the outside world. We're not marketing it well to our brothers, to our family. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Sean, 
during the aviator conference um you spoke of a deal that could be reached between the travel agencies and the airline if they're able to package what you just said lagos takrade lagos ho even inbound but um last week when we had the series two with the tour operators one made mention that they brought a deal like that for a group ticket but the fare that was given to them was nothing to write home about i'd like to, to comment on that um do they need a special arrangement to be able to access this deal the honest answer is going to be the numbers are going to depend upon the volumes and what is you know how it's going to be driven on it if you are coming to say right we're going to target 1000 passengers over the course of a year certainly you'll get a much better deal than if you say oh i'm going to bring a group of five uh you know there's going to be a commitment from the airline perspective as well you've got to build the flight schedules you've got to be able to block seats ensure that seats are available for the people at the right times and so forth we've worked with multiple agents to try and set this up believe me i can list at least four agents i can't see if they're on the call right now but there are four agents at least that i personally have been involved with where we have put together very attractive packages and i mean very attractive as in you know i can't give the numbers out here but numbers that if people heard were like wow and none of them have been able to take that last step and actually close it out and deliver they've all pulled out at the last minute or this person hasn't made his deposit and so forth and you know, that's where the problem comes in. We're not able to close the deal. We're able to close the deal elsewhere, but we're not able to close the deal here. And, uh, you know, the excuses that sometimes come up are excuses. They're not reasons, they're excuses. And I think it, it, it's going to need people to realize that there is, I, I believe this firmly. And that is why, you know, that is why if I could, you know, you know, maybe praise ourselves a bit, which is why AWA is a successful regional airline, because we realize that the potential exists in the West African region, in Ghana, in Nigeria, in Cote d'Ivoire, in Liberia, in Sierra Leone, in our family, in our backyard, with our brothers. And that is where the economic growth is going to be. And remember, when people get disposable income, as economies grow, when people get disposable income, the first thing they buy is consumer goods. The second thing they buy is travel. And a big chunk of that travel is tourist spend, where a person may be going to visit a family, but he'll stop one day over here and he'll expend money. He'll go and look at it. If you are, if you are going from Liberia to Kumasi, say, to visit family or you know, a wedding or whatever else, you're coming via Accra. Take a day in Accra. Go look at the Nakuma Mausoleum. Go to Eburi. Go look at these things over there. They're all within a couple hours of layover in Accra, an Accra tourist stop. These are the kind of things which when you do it, look at what Ethiopia is doing, look at what Dubai has done. All these have created destinations with far less substance than we actually already have here. And putting the logistics, putting the marketing, just those little bits over there, the airline is bringing people in and we will happily work with you to push this to our customers. But if we don't have a product to sell, we can't sell it. If we don't have a product, we can't sell it. Right. Okay. And um, Lizzie, Sean yeah. has said earlier that we we have we, we must instead of marketing to ourselves. I I think that the actual product we are marketing the, the wrong product in the first place because we are marketing uh, events. We are marketing uh, once a year um, happenings instead of marketing lifestyle something that people could be doing every day and if you're looking at the the tourism boards of the southern africa's of the of the of the eastern africa's the and that's why i spoke about partnership they're working together with other stakeholders to be able to create that brand and so you would see the kenya tourism board coming coming here working with us uh, putting together travel agencies and selling the Kenyan brand to them. What, what stops us um, from starting to do something like this with, I see Gideon here um, as part of the participants, working with the Gideon Asaris and those other people going to Nigeria, Ghana Tourism Board, um, Adansi, all of those people, airlines going together to Nigeria, to Cote d'Ivoire and selling Ghana, letting them know that there is this place called uh, Amejope in the Volta region and this is what they have. 
that you, you, you might have, you, you could see seven little waterfalls at the same time um, at different places, that uh, the greenery, the, the serenity and all of that. Why don't we work together? So government and when I say tourism, what I mean government. So government, airlines and people like Adrian who are doing very well in the industry, working together and pushing Ghana out there. Because like Sean said, it is, it looks like a regional market, but there's a lot of money to be made from here to build economies. Nigeria alone is a market. It is the largest economy in Africa and it is sitting on our doorstep. And if you count the number of Nigerian tourists who come to Ghana, you could probably count them on one hand. And yet these same Nigerian tourists, they are, there are, based on numbers that we heard from Dubai tourism at least, there are probably 10 times as many Nigerians who bought a 10 hour flight to Dubai than who bought a one hour flight to Ghana. It is cheaper to come to Ghana. There is more to offer in Ghana. So why are they all going there for tourism? Because Dubai is all glitzy and Dubai tourism, there's roadshows in Dubai tourism. They don't even need visas to come here. Dubai says we have easy visa. Ghana says we have no visa. Just get on a plane, show up over here, come on in and spend your Naira. We are happy to take it. We, we already actually even have the infrastructure, which is probably better than most of their domestic infrastructure, and they appreciate it. The Nigerians who do come here for weekend breaks and stuff, and, and you see it. Come New Year's time, you saw how many Nigerian license plates. You couldn't get parking anywhere with all the Nigerian cars in the city. But, you know, it, it is there. They like it already. We just need to make it easier for them to come, and they will come over and over and spend more and more. Thank you very much. Listening to the two of you, I, I think that it all boils down to marketing, marketing our brand. I welcome you all once again to the Aviator Diaries. This is the series three. And with me, I have Sean Mendes from Africa World and Anthony Safo from Kenya Airways. Before Tony and Sean come back online, um, I'd like to read a few comments and a question. So from Reynolds Kusi, He's asking, please, how do one qualify to be a sales agent for an airline in Ghana? We run travel and tour and use the airlines, but we want to become sales agent to Africa World Airlines. Please, we'll be humbly glad if my question can be handled. Thank you. Gideon says, listening, should I come back? <laughs> Gideon says, listening to Mendes, I have a different impression now about AWA. It appears he is very passionate about domestic and regional tourism. Then he said, last year we struggled to get a response to our group request to take Ghanaians to Tamale for our Conquer Ghana trip, which attracted about 80 people. We sent them several email, emails, visited their office and still couldn't get what we needed. Their posture was not that of airline interested in promoting tours. Philomena comes back and says, do you have discount prices for travel agents who want to plan tours? So I think that, um, Sean would handle Gideon's question and then Philo, Philo's question will be handled by Tony. Okay, my, my answer to this is quite simple. Okay, the, the issue, by the way, the first question, which is about how to become a travel agency, certainly contact us. If you go to our website, there's a contact us form over there. Just go in and say you want to be that and we'll have someone from the sales team get in touch with you. There's certain requirements with registration and deposits and stuff which need to be met, but when those are met, we'll be very happy to sign up any agent who meets the criteria and is willing to work with us. So if we can close that off quickly. Uh, with regards to, uh, you know, to these things, I don't know the specifics of the Conquer Ghana trip or whatever else, but I'll tell you that the vast majority of where we get into these, um, you know, where these deals fall apart is, and I think some of the, um, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll put this in to, to, to a bit of a response to that, that we're not necessarily looking in terms of giving discounts. We're looking in terms of building partnerships. It needs to be beneficial to both sides in this respect. If you are talking of, I have a group today and I want a discount for that group, yes, we'll look at it on a transactional basis because that is what it is. If you're coming with a transaction, it'll be examined on a transactional basis. We're looking for a partner who we can say, right, over the course of one year, you are going to bring in 30 groups. And then yes, you will get significant discounts when that happens. If you're looking at one-offs, you will be treated as a one-off. As in a customer, you know, Using the restaurant analogy again, the man who walks into your restaurant once, he may have a lot of people, he may get 10% off his bill. But if he comes into your restaurant every week, 
you'll get special pricing, you'll get credit limit, you'll get the chef making his favorite thing, you'll get a birthday cake, you'll get everything because it's a longer term relationship. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the partner. And when we have the partner, we will both win together. And that is where we have struggled to get it because everyone wants a transactional relationship and they want the transactional relationship to be the airline giving a discount and them getting the profit. And that's not going to happen. The partnership has to be a win-win for both sides. In fact, not just for both sides, but optimally for both sides and society as a whole. And that's what we can really do well. Okay. Gideon wants to ask his question himself. I may not have <laughs> put it across well, so I'll give Gideon the chance to ask it. Hello, Gideon. Welcome to Hello. the Aviator Diaries. So, you, you, yeah, you can direct your question to him then. Yeah. Tony, uh, good, good morning, Tony. Good to see you. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, Mendes, uh, yeah, we haven't interacted before. Um, as you said, my name is Gideon from Adanse Travels. I'm, I'm so happy about how you are talking about Nigeria markets. I mean, and the fact that we can use that to promote our tourism here. And, and that, that prompted me to come out with this um, question. I, I honestly have not seen our as in that light of promoting um, tourism because um, I work with a lot of the airlines, um, Tony can attest to it. Um, we do a lot of groups. When you send a request, it's not about rates. We understand how the system works. But the posture, you send, so I want to do a group, maybe next month, I send a, a request to our. I expect to get a response on what weight they can offer. But like we send, and it takes like two weeks and no, no response. We come to your office and we are told to go back and um, get a um, wait for a response. Um, we get a response and then we send another request, okay, we initially requested for 50 seats. Now we will need 80 seats. And it, it, it never came, no response. Like you can call, there's technically no kind of, um, I don't know whether there's no group sales department or, I mean, we felt that we were bettering our for requesting so many seats. So eventually we had to rely on passionate to provide the other, the other seats, which they also gave the same pusher. So we had to book the, about 30 seats, individual seats from the system. And how do you handle group when you have to book one, 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 one seat from the system? What if price, the price doubles as you are booking? How, how do I go about it? I, I do 200 passengers with uh, Kenya Airways within a week. You can ask um, Tony, when we started with Kenya Airways, the first request was for six people. So your point about you need like agents who do 30 groups, it, it starts from, from somewhere. When we started with, our dancers started with Kenya, with, we had only a group for sex. That was, that was when we started with. But the reception from Kenya was to Adansi, how they, they, they hold us, even when we had only little business, made us believe that they are ready to support us. So, Gradually, we move our business, and it's from six to ten to twenty to fifty, and then we're able to two hundred packs with with them. So, if agents come, don't see any agents because the request is small. Give them best service you can. Support the agent. That is how the agent will believe that the airline is ready to support, and that believe or that by help us to also the agenda so that we can then do more. It, the 30 will not just come, it will start from somewhere. So I'm, I'm just, I haven't, but I'm just happy how you are as the, the ideas. I mean, giving me a different impression that probably okay. some people down there didn't do their work well, but it's a good one. So thank, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gideon. Before Sean answers, okay. I'd like to ask a question. <laughs> what would be required for before an airline decides to make um, a region or a country a tourist destination, what is required from that country or region? 
I think airlines don't decide to do these things. These, you know, you have to, as I said before, you have to have the product for an airline to be able to sell it. If you have, you know, Dubai sells itself because Dubai has put the effort in to do that. Emirates no longer really needs to sell Dubai as a destination. People go to Emirates because they know, I mean, all Emirates has said is we are the airline of Dubai and people who want to go to Dubai are already sold on it. Certainly places like Qatar Airways have marketed the nation as a result. Rwanda is another good example where you, you've largely heard of the, these countries because of the airline and the marketing that the airline does in terms of, of pushing that out there. But in terms of the markets that, that we are serving, at least in the West African region, I think everybody has heard of Ghana, everybody's heard of Nigeria. They just may not have I mean, genuinely, I will tell you this. From when I show people pictures of Takoradi and the beaches over there, and I show them what Mole Park does in the north and what, you know, what you can see in Kumasi and things like that, this is something that our fellow Africans do, are interested in. They, they, Afri you know, I, I've lived throughout Africa. I'm married to an African. I've been in East Africa, Southern Africa, West Africa, all over the place. And Africans love Africa. And Africans want to see more of Africa. They just find it so hard to do that instead they'd rather go into Europe or to Dubai or wherever else. Let's make it easier. Let's give them, let a Nigerian school, uh, uh, you know, let the Nigerian school children know that just one hour flight away is Ghana and they have a Western region in Takoradi with lovely beaches and that the castles in Cape Coast are all over there. And let this be something that everybody in Africa knows, that Ghana has this over here. And that, let's not just even look at Ghana. Let's look at the fact of taking Ghanaians to Nigeria. Because there are things in Nigeria that when I listen to, uh, you know, Dozi and Ikechi, the uh, two Nigerians who are very big in, the, uh, in the, the travel journalism and blogging and other things like this. And when I look at some of the stuff that they come up with, I'm shocked to see some of these things which exist in northern Nigeria, the historical forts, uh, the beautiful beaches in Nigeria, and which makes sense. It's just that you don't actually associate that. You associate Nigeria with Lagos because that's what you see in the news. And Nigeria has done a woeful job, probably even worse than Ghana in terms of pushing there tourism industry. And we need to improve on all of these things if we're going to be able to help it. Because, you know, we're an airline that wants to bring people into Ghana, obviously, but at the same time, we want to take Ghanaians. The same issue with Nigerians going to Dubai is Ghanaians going to Dubai and Ghanaians going to Washington. You can just as easily go on a holiday to Abidjan. And Abidjan is right next door. Abidjan has enough familiarity as well as interesting new things to explore it's a lovely city it's got great food it's got good shopping it's got all sorts of things over there and you know awa now flies to abidjan <laughs> uh, but no but that is the whole thing if you make it easy for people to go there i hope that people will start to go there and this is where the airline can drop you up to the point of the airport but what happens beyond the airport will make or break your experience if you don't actually if you're landing in abidjan and you don't speak french and you try to get a taxi Chances are something will go wrong somewhere in the, along the way. And that may spoil your entire experience. If you don't know which hotel to book and you don't, you know, you're not sure what the French one star, two star, whatever stands for, and you book the wrong hotel and you wind up somewhere where it's got no electricity, no hot water, you'll just say, hey, this Abishan was horrible. And you won't go back there. But if you have a proper tour operator who can package all of this together with you, and the airline is able to work with them. So you get a small discount on your airfare and then you land over there and there's a man meeting you there who speaks English, takes you to a taxi, takes you to the hotel. You want to go to the cathedral the next day in Abidjan, they arrange, get you over there. And Hello, Sean. <laughs> I see you selling. <laughs> I know, but this is my point. I'm very passionate. I told you, when you get me started on this, we've only got one hour on this. So you better be careful when you get me started on this. These are the kind of things which we crave to put in place, but we need the partners to do it. And I'll go back to now what Gideon's question was. And I'll, I'll make the distinction again between transaction and relationship. I'm not looking for someone who can deliver 30 groups a year. I'm looking for somebody who's working towards that goal. If you are coming to me and saying, I want to do 30 groups in the year and the groups will be small. There'll be two people, three people, five people, but I'm going, my business is based upon the fact that I want to do tours 
for Nigerians coming to Ghana. I will work with you. If you don't meet your 30 target and you only meet 25 target, we'll review what went wrong. What can we do to basically help you? But if you're just coming to me and say, I have a group of 80, give me a discount. It's a transaction. You're not coming to me to build a relationship. You're coming to me for a transaction and we will have to treat it in a transaction manner. But if you're coming to me saying, let's do a partnership, I will do this marketing, you will do this marketing. I'll tell you things which we can do as an airline. If you're trying to get something like that, we'll put something in our in-flight magazine that, okay, this is a tour operator who runs tours, say, to Mole Pa. And, uh, you know, if we're able to get this kind of thing together, contact this person. And things like that are what people look at, people read. We'll put something on our website. When people come maybe and you're booking a ticket, which will be, say, from... Nigeria to Tamale, if someone is booking that, we can have it on our website that would you like to add on a guided tour of Mole Park for $100 or whatever else on that. And this is the kind of thing which puts it front and center in front of the people. This is what a partnership is about. So certainly if we put it out there, we sell the $100 package, we get 5%, 10% commission on it, you get the rest of the money and everything else. That's how it works well. Uh, we negotiate that, we work together for it. But just simply coming and saying, I want a group fair. A group fair is a transaction. It is not a relationship. When you talk about things like, oh, we started small and then we grew and so forth, great, that is what we want. Come and tell us, what is your plan? What do you want from us? What can we give you? Maybe we can make it work, maybe we can't, but let's talk, let's have that discussion, let's build that relationship and we will both benefit from it and the entire tourism sector will benefit from people putting this in place. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Tony, any contribution to what Sean has said? It's sure. yes, I understand exactly where Sean's coming from. I what I think though is maybe I, this isn't the right place to talk about. I, I, I think Gideon was, was talking about the general response to, to him, but let's. let's your line is breaking what Sean says John what what he's saying is and of course um, with us for example working with Gideon and other uh, tour companies we there is a distinction between is it better yeah it's better Elizabeth is it any better Yes, Tony, it's, it's okay. Okay, so I agree completely with Sean on that. There's a clear distinction. Okay, so we, we distinguish between a transaction and a relationship because yes, if you come and you say, I want uh, this, um, because we have built probably a relationship over, over time, we can still deal with the transactions in line with the relationship we have. But in an initial discussion like that, when, you, when they, they say that we want debt to groups, I, I understand how Africa World would see it as a trans transaction instead of a relationship. So, 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 so that's it. I understand that. Okay. All right. So to the top operators who have joined this discussion, listening to Sean, I think that if one agency cannot do it, about two, three or four agencies can, can come together and say that, yes, we are coming from social and social consults. We are approaching Africa world with this partnership. Last week when we had a discussion, I think Gideon suggested the tour operator wholesale. Uh, hello, Gideon, you, you said something about the wholesaling for tour yeah. operators. Uh -huh. So with this kind of wholesaling, it shouldn't be one company since we don't have the funds for it. I'm thinking that if two or three companies come together and they, they can approach Africa World and say that, yes, we want to enter into a partnership with you. We want to develop these routes. How best can Africa World help us? It should work. So that the company does not see it as a transaction, but rather a partnership. Yeah. Absolutely. I could not agree with what you've said more. Come to us. It doesn't have to be a single agency. It can even be the association. It can be the association. It could be through the ministries. It, I mean, we've, we've tried to engage with ministries. We've tried to engage with regions. 
on these kind of things. I said, everyone is keen on it, but they can't take that final step. And that is what, if somebody, the person who is actually able to step up and take that final step will laugh all the way to the bank because there is such a huge market and the person who does it right will be very successful from doing it. Okay, thank you. Gideon, did you want to say anything? Yes, um, yes, Lizzie. Um, just, just to clarify that point. So we, we believe that's the way to go post-COVID. I mean, what has transpired is gone. We're looking forward. We're looking, looking forward. My last trip to Lagos was, um, I think, six March, um, um, first week in March. And I was so amazed and surprised how many agents were just, like, the mere uh, you agent from Ghana? Okay, so we wanted to bring some people in Ghana. We don't know anybody to contact. Oh, so do you have packages? Do you have packages in Ghana? I was, I was so overwhelmed how agents in Nigeria, uh, in Lagos, were eager to, I mean, right when I returned, I had about one than five inquiries for my team to respond to with regards to packages in Ghana. And, and talking to them, I see the main challenge for Nigeria agents is for Ghana is that they, they, there's no readily available package where they can just sell, like the way they have Dubai package, five nights Dubai package, and they just sell, add their markup and sell without any stress. And knowing that when the person lands in Accra, there's a responsible agent who will pick it from airport and handle the business, and then the person get back safely. So that is the problem. That is what Nigerian agents want. The market is over 200 million. That is the market we are looking at. Huge market in Nigeria. Yeah, are um, we possible? Yeah, you made that, mention. You made mention of a package, a yes. readily made package. But yes. who, whose responsibility is it to bring that package out? Whoever wants to make money on the deal, the person who takes, who steps up, takes the risk, and puts together the package will be the one who is successful from it. Okay. Exactly, and 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 that is where I mentioned the wholesaling the other time. So. Most, most of us have been busy selling pieces, okay? Everyone selling pieces of it. Now, like, if we want to make it work, we need to have an establishment who says, that, okay, I, I want to put in the required resources and then have the required partnership. So I have the partnership with our, and our is, is putting my packages on, the, on, on their website, on their in-flight um, uh, okay. magazine. <laughs> I have secured um, 5,000 um, tickets at Kakum at a discounted rate that I can give sell within a month. And I have secured STC deals with buses and cars that is available. And then I put the packages together. Now agents, all agents can tap into it. It becomes easy. So I do not need to deal with 10 different agents selling two, 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 two. But you sell it one piece who then distribute it to the other agents. You sell with one piece, who then distribute it to the L and the hotels, and and that is what we we currently, I mean, we are working on it. I mean, okay, so the that, so the onus is on the tour operators to Ex exactly. together this package. All right. Yeah, we are and we are working on it, Lizzie. Um, okay. Then. <laughs> time to, to to release it down. Lizzie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, Tony. Lizzie. If I could, if, if I might um, step in. Okay. I have a little problem with um, when we see that the owners is on the top, which has to put the package together. So let's say I have, I know about all the attractions in Ghana and I want to promote it. I want to promote it in Nigeria. Um, it's easy to put the information together. Well, it's, it's still difficult, but relatively easy to put the information together. But it's very expensive on my own to go into Nigeria and try and promote this. However, if we were all working together, and I, I probably have said this too many times, if we were working together as a partnership, the tourism board, the tourism authority, um, the tour operators coming together, Gideon mentioned STC, you could decide to go into Lagos and just take one day, hire the conference room of a hotel, and invite all the Nigerian travel agents to come in there and tell them this is what we have. And these are the packages you have. And if you sell that, you get this and that. And this is how 
the the process flows. You you book, we give you this discount, or um, Africa World gives you this discount. They fly you in, they connect you with STC, that kind of thing. But once we come together to do it, to 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 do it, the 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 cost of it comes down because it is no longer a dancing scene. But yes, no matter how much experience he has in selling to buy and do other places, he does not have the capacity to be able to take it all upon himself. And that's why it's important. And I'm happy that he also included the hotels and the bus companies. But we need to put a team together that goes to, decides to go to Nigeria and go to Lagos for a day, go to Abuja for a day, go to um, Kano for a day, and Ghana and come back. And we will be surprised how easily the traffic will start coming in after we've done that, that easy thing. OK. As so, OK, Tony, so you made mention of the tourism board. From my experience in Ghana, I, I know that Tourism Board, Ministry of Tourism, really, if you want to depend on them before we bring this package up, it's going to take like forever. I think the private sector can do this without any government intervention. I think travel and tour agencies can come together and agree on a, a, a mutual because it benefits us. Fine, we'll be selling Ghana, everybody will know who, what Ghana is, but at the end of the day, you have to pay the bills. The government, the government is not gonna do it. As I sit here now, the government will not do it. What we are discussing here today, the government will not do it. It will depend on us, as private sectors, airlines, uh, travel and tour agents, hoteliers, to come together, everybody in the chain to come together and make this package work. If we have a package for Ghana, if we have a brand for Ghana, we will be able to market it better than what we are doing today. Okay, Sean, I see your hand up. What, okay. what, we, first, what we first need to agree is that, is that it, if that is government's work. I mean, if it's not, that's fine. Let, let's private hand uh, the private sector handle it. But if it is part of the, of the tourism authorities' work to do things like this, then let's demand it. We cannot continue to say government won't do it, government won't do it. If it's government work, let's demand that they do it. Plus, if it is difficult, if they are not going to put the package together, then I agree. Let's private sector put the plan together and deliver to them but everybody should be working together to be able to to ensure that we deliver this all right thank you thank you Tony. sorry Sean. i was what i was going to add on this is while governments are often reluctant to be the ones taking the first step i promise you if you have a successful setup you will have government jumping in to back it and take some of the credit themselves, but you will also, but they will come and they will back success. Uh, if you are out there and you are showing the numbers of, de of delivering agents very quickly, the tourist board who may have not given you the time of day before, and not to say they don't, I found them to be very receptive. So let's not say that I'm, I'm not bad mouthing them by any means. They're also limited in terms of what they can do. Their job, the enabling environment, their job is not to be the, the last mile delivery solution. So create the delivery solution, go to them and say, I need this, this, and this to be an, you know, to enable me to work easier. I'm very confident they will try their best to make that happen. Certainly, you know, government is a big sprawling bureaucracy. They can't necessarily snap their fingers and do things quickly, but they definitely will get their support and that will count for a lot in terms of the backing that they can provide and everything. But as you said, someone has to take that step. You cannot wait on them to take the step and then hand it over to you. That's not going to happen. You need to take that step and then ask them to help push you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give uh, the chance to three people to contribute or ask a question, and then we'll start wrapping up. So Sean, Tony, as we wait for the questions or contributions, be preparing your concluding remarks. <laughs> Thank you. Please raise your hand if you have a contribution or a question. As we wait for you to raise your hand, I will read a comment from Philomena. Philomena says, we have to start to give the 30 groups. 
So can Africa World promise travel agents of discount fares for tourism purposes? Ahmed said, well, session, I hope it's not a campaign for a top job at the Ministry of Tourism. Lol. <laughs> Post-COVID will, right, will be the right time to initiate all what he spoke about. We need their support. Emanuela said, great point, Tony. Okay, so someone else asked the question that um, would Africa World consider a tourist destination if the tour operators make a case for it? For example, who? Okay, if, if there is a business case to be made for anything, we will, we will consider it as a business. Uh, believe me when I say that there are very few people we have, there's definitely no company in Ghana who is more committed towards developing Ho as a tourist destination than AWA. And that starts from the very top of AWA. And I don't need to name names, but people know that AWA has definitely got very strong roots in the Volta region in particular due to our founder and uh, you know our co-chairman. So, I mean, we've always, we were very keen that uh, we could actually do a flight into Ho Airport the first flight into Ho Airport for the Yam Festival. And, uh, you know, that would be an ideal way to have showcased everything. Unfortunately, COVID has stepped in and, uh, you know, things have gotten off track to do things like that. But, you know, absolutely, if there is a business case for it, we will go anywhere. We will, it, it, it's business. Show us that the case exists. We will give our data. You can add your data. If, if, if 15 people a week are going for tourism and I've got 20 people a week who are going as o &D traffic uh, for business and you know, I've got some people connecting from Lagos for business. I've got some people connecting to South African Airways as flight. And when you add all of this together, you can get enough business for maybe two, three flights a week. And you know, this is the kind of thing which, uh, it's, it's the kind of business case we put together when we opened the war route. Uh, everyone was like, who's going to go to WA? You know, it's a small thing, it's a small community. No, there were enough people to do it. Certainly, we've had challenges in doing it, but if you don't, someone's got to be the first to do it and uh, bring the right business case, have the right plan, and take the first steps. You're never going to get there if you don't take the first steps. Okay, thank you. All right, Gideon, you can ask your question. No, I'm not asking a question. I'm okay. just giving my fun minutes and just to um, show appreciation for their time and for what they are doing. And especially to you, Lizzie, for the platform you are providing for us all to share ideas. Um, it, it's today, I like I said, I never knew how passionate a AWA is, is about um, tourism. I have always had a different opinion about them. Um, until today, when the, the Sean, Sean, when Sean spoke about um, um, some of these things, so I'm very happy to for you to provide this um, uh, platform for us. So going forward, I will keep in touch and let's let him in on how what we are doing. Um, we've had relationship as a business with our from 2013, but sad to say they never visited us um, um, for seven years. So Sean, over to you. Uh, let your team engage us. It's, 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 it, is, it is how we build, we build things up. So um, and we are still waiting out for our first visit after seven years of relationship with our. And, um, <laughs> oh, wow. Going for it. We'll be doing we have to maintain <laughs> social distancing now. I wear my mask. And <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, of course. So... I must say that we'll be, we'll be doing our best to engage um, the tour operators, as you know, how about developing and selling Ghana. It's just the, the right mix of, of um, skills that we need. So we, we are forming a group that is business oriented more than um, advocacy. So, and with the idea to really, um, because you found, like Tony said, it's difficult for Madansi or any other or against their loan to go in terms of the sales. So we are putting together a group and um, we, are, we, are, we are advancing our, 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 our process and we will let you in and see how our council so that we to have standardized packages that 
we can sell to the regional um, countries like um, um, Nigeria and uh, Cote d'Ivoire and other places. And we've, we've found that the number one um, barrier for Nigeria market is pricing. They are very sensitive to pricing. And the one way to solve pricing is to have quantity. So um, if we're able to put uh, more, more agencies together and we can have quantity in numbers, we can be able to um, overcome. And COVID hotels are willing to also um, engage us. Um, formerly, we've had difficulty with hotel giving us good pricing for the region uh, corporate because they were getting enough business from the business side. Now the conferences are not flowing. We are tapping in to see if they can look at the tourism side because they have also been like 90% focused on business arrivals. So now that the business arrivals are not coming, everything is on Zoom now. So the uh, conferences are not flowing. So <laughs> All right, Gideon. <laughs> Point well noted. Thank you very much. Okay, um, we should be wrapping up because our time is up. Um, our, okay, Galaxy 7 Duo, please make it brief, 30 seconds. 30 seconds from you, please. Oh, oh this is my Apple. I just got in here by accident. But I'm into aviation, hotel, aircraft engineering, and uh, somehow our tourism industry has been sidelined by the government. But we need, as you say, both the private sector and the government to kind of help us, all the sectors. I brought Boeing here simply because they were afraid of uh, our old airplanes and the non-profitability of our operators. So we were going to establish maintenance facility here. Unfortunately, the government did not see it fit to assist. Currently, I, I own Oyster Bay Hotel. I'm sure most of uh, the Ghanaian operators know of Oyster Bay Hotel. Uh, again, it needed government assistance and uh, that hasn't happened. One man cannot do it all. So right now, uh, this is the first time I'm hearing of this entity. So maybe I can interact with some of you for not only the hotel aspect, but the aviation aspect as well. As I see now, Ethiopian Airlines and Kenya Airways are using their passenger planes for cargo movement. And of course, the FAA and the regulatory bodies would not accept that because it's dangerous. And it also uh, ruins the flow of the aircraft. Now, there are systems there that can assist. But operators of Ethiopian Airlines and Kenya Airways don't know this. So on this platform, we can exchange ideas and uh, knowledge of uh, what will help our industry, both from the flight operation, the hotel servicing, and of course, uh, uh, the ticketing and uh, uh, what our is doing and every other airline is doing. Oh, okay. Th thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank and you. I hope we <laughs> maintain this type of dialogue. It will definitely be maintained, sir. Thank you. Can, uh, kindly put your you. email address or contact in the chat box, and then we'll get in touch with you. I think Sean wants to get in touch with you specifically to discuss <laughs> further on what you were saying. <laughs> okay. Oh, Thank oh, you. You're welcome, sir. All right. So Sean has to leave. Please, your concluding remarks, and then... Now, this has been a very enjoyable uh, hour. I think, uh, as I warned you at the beginning, if you get me started on this, this is, a, this is something that I am very, 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 I feel very strongly about this. I think, uh, you know, 
I may not have been born in Africa, but I chose Africa and I see the potential in Africa. And I really, really believe that within my lifetime, Africa will, will transform itself into something. And the tourism industry where Africans learn more about other Africans, go visit other Africans, build an African brotherhood is going to be such a core thing for the benefit of African society in general. So this is not just about what business we can do. This is generally about transforming our home for the next generation. And let's look at it from that respect. Let's take the right steps. And remember that, you know, we're just one part of a bigger place, but if we do our part right, everybody else will also be successful. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for joining us. Sorry, session. I've got to rush. I've got a 12 o'clock meeting. So thanks very much, everyone. Sure, Sean. Sure. All right. So bye. <laughs> okay. So, Tony, your concluding yeah. remarks. Hello, Tony. Tony. Can you hear me now? Yes, please. Okay, so first of all, thank you for the opportunity and the, and the great job that you do. I think that Ghana has one of the, of the best tourism potentials. The, we, we, our, our attractions are some of the very best. In, and I speak as somebody who has seen at least a bit of what other parts of the world has to offer and I've seen ours in detail. Um, Sean had mentioned who the Volta region of Ghana is one typical example. It's the, the experiences are amazing. But to promote it, I think we are promoting the wrong product now as a country. We are promoting events instead of ongoing regular lifestyles. So we should let people know what the attractions are, how, how cool they are. And that to do that, we none, no one particular stakeholder can be successful. So the tour operators, the bus companies, the, the airlines, the, the other forms of travel agents, and of course the Ghana Tourism Board, or Ghana Tourism Authority has to come together and work to promote Brand Ghana. There's a lot that we can do. Hello, Tony. Hello, Tony. Yes, yeah. You were saying there is a lot that we can we can do together, and then the line went off. Yes, and to to help build uh, to to add to the economy that we. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Tony, for joining us today. It's been a wonderful session. At least we have the aviation industry's perspectives and then the tour operator's perspectives as well. My takeaway today is that we should create partnerships. For everything we are saying here today to work, we need to be partners. No one person can do it. It has to be from everyone in the, in the chain. So I'm grateful that you were able to join this session. I'm grateful to our panelists for availing themselves for today's episode. Thank you, Tony. Thank you all. And once again, this is the Aviator Diaries Series 3, where we aim to break the gap between aviation and tourism. So I'll see you next week on our series four. If you want a recap of what we have uh, said today, kindly log on to www.ghaviation.com or you can watch the video on YouTube at GH Aviation TV. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Um, he hello, sir. Galaz is serving you. Please, can I get your contact? Hello? Hello? Hello?